Hi, this is Brian Kim, and I'd like to share with you a recent case I presented at a meeting titled Trifecta, Brunescent Cataract, Tiny Pupil, and Zonulopathy. This is an 80 year old Hispanic gentleman who had a brunescent cataract, tiny pupil with zonulopathy in the right eye. After I removed the cataract, I found there to be a possible tear in the posterior capsule. And although I didn't lose vitreous, um, I wanted to make sure that we proceeded safely and I placed a three-piece lens in the ciliary sulcus. And so I am now trying to do the left eye and this is the eye after receiving dilating drops. As you can see, a very small pupil. So first thing I do after I make my main uh, keratome incision, I make a small uh, scleral incision underneath the main incision and I place an iris hook. And you want to do this because in cases of small pupils and potential zonulopathy, you can get iris prolapse. And so you want to be able to uh, put traction on that pupil so that it doesn't tend to go out of the in incision. And with cases of zonulopathy and small pupils, you don't want to use a malugan ring or any type of ring that only fixates and dilates uh, within itself because those devices will retract the pupil. However, it's only retracting uh, within itself, whereas something like an iris hook is fixating along um, the scleral wall. With rings, you can actually have inadvertent disengagement of the ring um, during your uh, surgery. So this provides a much more stable positioning of the and retraction of the pupil. As you can see, what I like to do is make sure you pull the stopper all the way uh, posteriorly and after you do that you want to turn the um, the iris uh, hook portion of it um, by slightly uh, applying some torsional um, pressure on the stopper so that you can kind of dial that um, the tip of the hook downward and then you can retract so again, you want to pull the stopper back, hold close to the tip, place it into the incision, and once you have it in place, you want to be able to make sure you just rotate that stopper so that it's, the hook is pointing down, and once you rotate that stopper in position, you pull the, and retract the iris, which is, again, fairly straightforward. I, I applied Tripan Blue on the surface of the lens just to help with my visualization. And this is under OVD, so you need to kind of paint the surface uh, using your cannula. Now, once I'm starting to um, perform capsular excess, I'm finding that all that's happening is capsular stria. I'm not able to puncture it because there's no zonular counterforce that's pulling the zonules uh, centrifugally. So I went ahead and punctured centrally with the cystotome needle. And here, if you don't have enough uh, counterforce um, to help keep the the capsule on stretch, the um, the with loose zonules, this can be a problem. However, in this case, it was okay. Uh, I did my one-step hydrodissection technique here, and proceeded with my uh, double chop and cross chop maneuver. Again, trying to make sure I don't utilize any ultrasound or vacuum during the chopping maneuvers. I placed the chopper out to the equator, placed the phaco tips up incisionally, and I fractured the lens using diagonal forces. As you can tell, um, I was able to chop the surface, but I was not able to chop all the way through because this is a very dense lens. And so when you're dealing with a very dense lens, um, you have to try to chop that posterior capsule. So that was the cross chop maneuver. And what I'm going to do here is, again, without using any ultrasound or vacuum and purely under irrigation only, I'm going to try to perform successive chop maneuvers again. Chopper out to the equator, phaco tip deep, and then I'm cracking. And so the reason why this approach is uh, better than traditional chop techniques is you normally have to bury the phaco tip on the surface of the lens to, um, ultra, with ultrasound and then using high vacuum to hold the lens. But then the chop maneuvers are still on the surface of the lens. Whereas if you place the chopper out to the equator without ultrasound or vacuum, you can place that phaco tip very deep. 
uh, into the lens material um, and then uh, chop. And so effectively you're creating very deep posterior uh, level chops. And so you'll be able to chop uh, the posterior uh, plates in these burnescent lenses. And so again, I'm going to place that um, chopper out to the equator and uh, try to bring that fragment to the central safe zone without fishing for the pieces. And that's the other important point is don't go ahead, don't try to fish for the pieces peripherally. You can see the density of this lens as I chop it. You can feel that as I'm squeezing the two instruments together that there's a sudden loss of resistance and that just goes to show how dense this lens is. And I'm using very gentle application of ultrasound and vacuum and as a result you can see that the bubbles are still captured within the uh, dispersive viscoelastic that's coating the uh, endothelium of the cornea. And the bubbles are just stationary the entire time. You see that fracturing of the lens is the lens again is very dense. Um, I'm actually turning the, cho the chopper um, sideways and I'm going deeper and pushing the faker tip down to meet the chopper. And this is again kind of a diagonal chop maneuver just to give myself some support uh, so that that lens material doesn't fall posteriorly. And that's another trick is to do this almost like a reverse chop. Now when you remove the uh, cortex, you want to make sure you sweep tangentially side to side because the zonules are weak. If you pull radially, you're going to, you're going to actually isolate the zonules and ap apply more stress to the zonules, which you don't want to do. So you want to sweep side to side and tangential forces and that will help tease away and uh, help loosen uh, the cortex. Also for these weak zonular cases, you want to be able to uh, remove lens epithelial cells and you can use the INA hand handpiece as well as using something like a Singer sweep to polish underneath the anterior capsular surface. I like to use a sweep for my sub-incisional lens epithelial cells and I use the IA for the portion that's more anterior. This is the way I load my uh, CTR and uh, you can see it goes in fairly easily and as I inject I like to use my cannula to pop the tip of the, the distal portion of the CTR in. So what did I do differently? I made sure that I did successive chop maneuvers um, without um, FACO or ultras, uh, FACO or vacuum. I made sure that I went deep with the placement of my uh, FACO tip so that I can get a deeper posterior chop so that uh, I'm able to access and uh, break and attack the posterior plate. And I made sure that I always pulled the fragment centrally into the central safe zone as I emulsified. I did gentle emulsification. As you can see, the CDE is, is in less than double digits. And so this patient did exceptionally well with very little ultrasound energy. Um, and with patients, uh, you can perform this type of surgery as well. Thank you for your kind attention.